Hi, Keith here with another short video on using Primer and Permanita to analyze biological and environmental data. In this one, I'm going to look at an option in Primer second stage analysis. Before going there, a brief recap of the situation. I'm working with simulated data from a simulated environment, a marine benthic system with sediments in 25 meters sloping down to 75 meters and getting from sandy to muddy as we go down that incline. And there are three oil platforms leaking into the environment um, and hydrocarbons are getting incorporated into the bottom sediments and affecting the biota. Sample sites immediately downstream of those platforms because the current predominantly flows to the south off to the side in a similar depth and then downstream stations for all of the upstream sites. Over here is the environmental data, a set of four environmental variables measured on each of the samples and here is the biotic data with abundances of each of the taxa that's present in three groupings, crustaceans, mollusks and worms. Okay. Primer. I've imported the data into Primer and then log transformed the hydrocarbon, normalized these data, done the resemblance matrix using Euclidean distance and drawn up the PCA. And you can see here some fairly clear patterns in the location of the samples. There's a gradient for um, primarily to do with depth going this way and a second one going this way that is primarily to do with hydrocarbons and the severely polluted samples are splitting off. Over to the MDS start with the data square root resemblance matrix using Bray Curtis and then the MDS and the separation of the polluted samples is very clear here with all of the others merging together in a tight cluster or tight grouping. Now in the previous video I looked at how we can ask the question or answer the question are the patterns in the biota reflecting those in the environmental data and when we've got two resemblance matrix we can use relate to get a correlation coefficient that measures that relationship and using permutations we can test whether that is significant. But now I've got another question. The biota actually consists of three taxonomic groups and one of those might be more strongly or less strongly correlated to the environmental data than the biota as a whole. So I want to take this resemblance matrix for the environmental data and look at how it correlates with the other taxonomic groups. Okay, that's a task for second stage or two stage analysis. So click. And what we're looking at here, which I think is the common situation, is multiple matrices. So I selected the four matrices I'm interested in here. Bio, which is all of the taxa, crustaceans, mollusks and worms. And then just hit OK. This error message is just to do the way with the way I've labeled the spreadsheet, uh, the worksheet. So I'll just ignore it, and we get a matrix here of correlations. Now, as you would expect, the bio complete matrix is well correlated or highly correlated with the individual crustacean, mollusks, and worm matrices. There's not a great deal of difference evident between any of the correlations of the environmental matrix to the others. They're all about 0.6. To get a visual representation of this we can go over to MDS and I always like to see docs on there. So from the MDS the environmental data is sitting well away from the others and none of those as we saw in the uh, matrix itself is particularly closer to or further away from the environmental data than the pooled biota or any of the others. So that's one use of second stage analysis 
it's where you've got a set of resemblance matrices and you want to look at the correlations among them to see how well the patterns in one are reflected in patterns in the other. Another situation in which we've used it is where we've got essentially the reverse of this. We've got one set of biotic data and then we have three sets of environmental data water chemistry, sediment chemistry and um, hydrological variables and we can see which of those sets of environmental matrices the biota is most closely related to. There's another way in which I commonly use second stage analysis. When looking at the biological data it's common to transform the observations uh, in this case I've done a square root transform. In other situations people do often a logarithmic transform with the idea of downweighting the particularly abundant species so that the rarer species have some role to play in the patterns that we look at. But that does raise a question as to how much the transform is actually changing the patterns that we see. And so one way of looking at that is actually to do a second stage analysis. So if we look over here, I scroll down a bit, I've got the resemblance matrix for square root transform data. Down here I've got the resemblance matrix for the untransformed, for fourth root transformation, log transformation, and then in a sense the ultimate transformation, presence absence. And we can do a second stage analysis to see how similar these, these are. So I'm going to start with the untransformed over to second stage and then I'll select bio, this is the square root transformed presence absence, fourth root and logarithm and off it goes, this error message comes up again it's of no consequence here and again it's easier to look at these if we plot it out as an MDS. And I put some points on here. So you can see that the untransformed data is most similar to the square root, fourth root and log, but then you get, as you might expect, a fairly big change when we go across to the presence absence. So it's really saying the choice here of square root, fourth root or log is not making a huge difference. The major choices are when we go from untransformed to transformed with one of these or then go on to presence absence. And the second stage analysis is a nice way of looking at that and also it's an easy way to illustrate it for others.